This evening I'm in the countryside of Blackburn on a lovely green belt area known as Whitton Country Park. I'm here to meet up with a witness named Oliver Howarth. Oliver has kindly said yes to meeting me so he can relate his account with the British Bigfoot he came across in 2018. The uh, day of my sighting it was very specific. It was on the um, 20, on the 1st of September 2018. And I remember that day very distinctly because I'd just come back off holiday, been on a camping trip, and I'd come home and I had lots to do. Uh, sort all my pets out and whatnot, and unfortunately one of my animals, had, one of my chickens had died, so I took it up to Billingswood to my bushcraft shelter to bury it. And I decided, because it was a lovely sunny evening like what it is right now, decided to stay out for a little bit um, and come on the long way, supposed to go straight back to the main road, which is just over there. Uh, but from Billingswood you can weave your way down through all these lovely green belts. And I was walking through here, obviously, you know, it wasn't a conscious choice that I made. I was just following my feet where they were taking me. And these are paths that I've walked since I was a teenager, you know, over 15 years. Um, I know them like the back of my hand. Felt absolutely no anxiety of being out on my own or anything like that. And then it was as soon as I came through this gate and into just this little portion of... This is called Big Cover Wood, by the way. So it was as soon as I came in here, um, I felt all... It was almost like an energy shift from being outside coming into here where it's quite shaded um and it was like i felt almost like i was being compressed it was like the 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 air the atmosphere it was almost like squeezing me tight and that was like the sort of first thing that i noticed and back then um i wasn't anywhere near as spiritual as what i am now you know four years on from this site and i was always interested in bigfoot and i used to dip in and out of it throughout my life but this is what really propelled me on this journey of self-discovery of spiritualism and I'm, I'm a lot i've felt that energy again times that i've been out on my own at night time to look for clues or you know whatever i've felt that dense feeling uh, a few times um but of course back then i really didn't clock in on what it would have been i wasn't in tune with those sort of frequencies so anyway i had no other reason really just to think anything more of that other than just to plod on and uh, yeah where we're walking up now, it's a slight incline and there's a little, I mean, it's dried up now because we've not had any rain for a few weeks here, but not any proper rain anyway. And there's a little creek bed that runs all the way along here and leads all the way up to the top of this ridge. So as I say, I was just walking along, just happily taking in the you know, the sounds and sights and things like that. Just like I am now, just in my own little world. And that's the other thing I needed to mention as well. You know, right now we're making this video, you know, and I'm in my sort of Bigfoot zone, reliving this experience that I've told to quite a few people. I swear that night, Bigfoot was the last thing on my mind because I was quite, I was just exhausted from a long few days away or a bit upset that I've lost one of my pets. So I was really more just being mindful you know, and just in, you know, think, you know, thinking about different things and, you know, having that bit of me time, I wasn't necessarily thinking about seeing anything. So at this point, I'd been going out for about 12 months looking for, you know, tree knocks and whoops and whistles and things like that. I think you do when you're new to this hobby. And I'd actually kind of got to a point where I was starting to think, you know what, I'm not sure there is actually anything out here. And it was at this point, I'll just backtrack here in a minute, I got to the top at ridge line. I was just walking along at this pace, just turning my head like that, and then I stopped because I just looked in a direction and seen something that wasn't normally there. Again, I know these paths like the back of me, and I could walk them with my eyes shut, and it was almost like Scooby Doo. I did like a cartoonish few steps back like that, and I'm looking at it right now. This tree, it's it's almost exactly like it looked back then because we're at roughly the same sort of like foliage cover uh, this early into summer obviously when I saw what I saw that day we're at the end of summer so stuff was starting to die down so it was still lovely and lush and green and where I'm looking right now there's a v-shaped parting in the roadie bushes I saw this 
perfectly formed cone shape sticking out standing out as something unusual and something that shouldn't be there and i'm straining my eyes in the low light trying to you know think thinking that's interesting i've never seen that before and you know when people talk about bigfoot typically they talk about the you know the the, the black colored ones dark brown auburn what i saw was as orange as my beard it was orangutan orange and that's why again that's why it stood out so obvious because there's so much greenery here anyway this all i'm talking and talking here but this all happened in the matter of about 10 seconds maybe 15 seconds i'm looking at it and whatever this shape was this conical shaped domed head well that that's when i realized it was a head because it started to turn as i'm straining my eyes looking at this shape and as that happened as the head turned, the right arm came up, what I realised was an arm. Exactly the same colour. I don't particularly remember any details of length of fur or hair, whatever you want to call it. I just remember it being big and the same colour as this cone shape. And at this point, my jaw is on the floor. I'm agape in shock, thinking, oh my God, I can't believe what I'm seeing here. And then in one fluid motion, where it was stood, it almost shimmied around I, I described it, this is the best way I've described it to so many people, it was like a ballerina twirl, it was so fluid and quick and effortless and it was behind this big trig that I'm looking at and again at this point, mouse on the floor and the last thing I saw before I bottled it, before I legged it, these big fat black sausage like fingers just kind of roped, roped around the side of the tree bark almost like that kind of motion, second hand. And then this face peeped out, you know, with the cone-shaped head. And I'm thinking about it in my mind's eye, looking at this place again, that I've been back to so many times, and still to this day, I can't remember the eyes. It's like I've blurred them out of my mind as a defense mechanism, maybe, because I was pretty scared at this point. Just not, not terrified, like I've spoken to some people who've seen these things and been traumatized by them. It just, it was, it was, you know, it was scary, but I was just gobsmacked at what I was seeing. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And yeah, I couldn't see the eyes, but what I could see were the teeth. And it barred its teeth at me like this. And the teeth were pearly white. The skin texture was like, you know, tar black, but very leathery. And as I say, I saw the teeth and that was it for me. I bolted back down that hill um, and ran home. Um, all the way home which is about a mile from here and yeah I'm quite a heavy smoker and I've not run that fast since I was a, probably since I were a child uh, it put the step in me so yeah at that point I legged it shimmied off home and I came out onto the field and it was the weirdest thing because thinking back to it that energy level that I'm talking about, it was almost like I came out of it when I was back out onto the field. And as some sort of uh, involuntary response, my legs wobbled like that. And I, I kind of did that sort of thing, fell down into grass. Um, and yeah, my, maybe I was having a panic attack, I don't know. But I remember ringing my girlfriend at the time. It was just the first person I thought to ring. And obviously I was sobbing, I was in tears. And she said to me, she said, well, you do go out looking for these things. Why are you so surprised to see one? Um, and she managed to like say to me, she said, go back, see if you can see it again. And for a, a brief moment, I did, you know, attempt to come back, but I just couldn't. And then that was it. I, I legged it all the way home. Um, so some people have asked me, why didn't you take a picture? Why didn't you take a video? And, you know, the way I explain it to people, you know, pertaining to myself as an individual I've got a lot of experience with animals I, that was what I you know went and studied at university I had a degree in zoology and built a career around working with animals and I've worked with some quite large animals some quite dangerous animals as well <clears throat> and there's always a respect that you should carry for a creature that could hurt you and the way the example I always use to people who ask me this question why didn't you take a photograph or a video if you came out of your house I went round the corner and there was a big African male lion stood right in front of you, six feet away from you. Your first instinct would not be to take a picture. And the thing is, it's kind of similar to 
seeing a Bigfoot in a way, almost seeing a, a large animal like that, because not everybody's privy to seeing wildlife in their lives like that. You know, like lions are just an example. You, you know, you might, you, you, you could read about them in a children's book growing up. You might see them on telly, in a documentary, and you might be lucky enough to see one in the zoo. But to come face to face with one, the first instinct you would have is not be to take a picture. And it is the same with anything. Unusual, Bigfoot, dogmen, big cats in the UK, UFOs, lake monsters, anything like that. It's something that in our 21st century, first world minds shouldn't exist. And you, it's almost like your brain has like a, a malfunction of senses because it's something that maybe you've read about in a book uh, if, you've in, if you've ever been interested in this topic. But by far and large, most people, I would dare say in this country, don't actually know what a Bigfoot is. So to see one in person, you just go into this sudden flight fight mode, I think, of what do I do? I've been confronted with this stressor. And I think the instinct of most people is to run and not get your phone out and start taking pictures of it. So, yeah. And then another, another thing I'll mention as well, kind of pertaining to my experience with animals, the way this thing moved, I, I explained it, it was very fluid and effortless for such a big creature. Um, and it was almost like, um, I, like I'm used to seeing you know, large animals and the way that they move. I've got quite a lot of experience in farms and I've worked in a zoo. Um, and big animals, you know, they, when they do move, it requires effort. But this thing, it just, it was almost ethereal in the way that it moved, like no animal I'd ever seen before move. And the best example I can use to describe the motion, it was almost like um, when the hem of a curtain, like a really fine, thin curtain hem, catches a breeze. And it just flutters like that. That's the way this thing rotated around. Um, so yeah. Before you had your experience, you was out and about all the time. Yeah. Um, and then you had your experience and you didn't want to go out anywhere. Uh, so you just started building up to getting back out there again. Tell us about that. So, yeah, I've always been very passionate about nature, love walking and doing days out hiking and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, Coming from you know, like through my years, I always wanted to get into wild camping, and you're right. Obviously, after my experience, any time I did come out, it was very much head on a swivel. Yeah, and being very wary, losing my confidence at being outside, because um, I was so I hate to say it, but paranoid at times that someone were just gonna come and sneak up behind me or whatever. Um, and uh, I did a couple of wild camps here and there, what we were talking about before. Um, didn't really know what I was doing. And then, you know, when we had the whole, you know, the lockdown stuff, you know, two years ago, that's when I really started to get into bushcraft. And, you know, I built up a lot of skills building shelters and, you know, learning about edible food groups and, you know, making, you know, very like safe fires and, you know, just that general hobby as a whole. And I thought I would love to extend this further out into wild camping. And e even as I got more into bushcraft, it married up so nicely with my interest in Bigfoot. You know, it, like learning about edible food groups and stuff and noticing when certain things grow at certain times of year through the different seasons, correlating that with sightings that were happening, you know, all around the country, not just in where I live, but... Um, so yeah, that was that, and earlier this year I, I, is when I thought, right, I need to do this, I need to start wild camping, because um, I'm very, you know, again, because I'm quite a spiritual person, I'd like to live in the mindset of live every day like it's your last, and 
you know, enjoy yeah. your time here and, and what have you. Um, and I tried a couple of times. I used to go up to Billings after work at night time when it was pitch black and I'd set up a little fire and, you know, it just weren't working and um, I was still scared. You know, I was still yeah. jumping at every bump and crack and, and things like that and not, <clears throat> excuse me, not staying up for what I want as long as I wanted to, you know, like f fulfilling what I thought my potential was of wild camping and, you know, and things like that. And, you know, and then I went through quite a low time, you know, at one point this year and, you know, I've, my mental health was really bad and I couldn't concentrate on my work. I couldn't concentrate on my pets. And the only brief lapses of time I was getting from feeling awful all the time was when I was out in the woods. That was the only time when I was feeling a little bit more relaxed and, you know, not tearful and depressed and what have you. And then there was just one very sort of clairvoyant moment that I had, very self-conscious moment where I'd been feeling depressed and I woke up one day and I thought, right, enough is enough. I'm sick of feeling like this. I need to do something mm. that's going to get me back out to a good place again. And I just said, I said to my dad, I said, look, I'm going wild camping. Try and stop me. I'm doing this because I needed that thing to boost me back up again. So I did it. I camped in a place that is very familiar to me. And again, it was like an amalgamation of all my bushcraft skills that I've learned. You know, I got a decent 10 and, you know, I was really into my healthy eating at that time and just went with the, you know, with the mantra of mindfulness and I'm going to smash this, I'm going to conquer this. And I did. And I did that wild camp uh, in an area that I know very well, like I say, the Graham Road, which is just over towards Rottenstall. Um, and I've done, since then, I've done six wild camps on my own, solo wild camps. Uh, all, more, mainly in different places. I've camped in the lakes twice. I camped up on Sabden Moor last week. And I'm just watching a deer behind your head. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just like a brown quadruped that just went through the bushes there. It's gone to the right hand side now, but... There it is. Oh yeah. You see it? I think I saw it. That's cool. You see it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's watching us, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I've done a couple of wild camps at lakes. Uh, I did one on Sabden Moor last week, which is like a big, it's a dogman hotspot and UFO sightings. It's on the foothills of Pendle Hill, which is obviously a very supernatural. Is it, is it on the road that takes you down into Sabden? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and you could walk to the uh, trig. Yeah, point that's right. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, and, and this is something else we were discussing before when we when we first got together, how how quickly I've adapted to this wild camping and being out on my own. And that was always going back to, you know, like what I saw, not my confidence a little bit. I always thought it'd be my biggest anxiety. Once it's gone dark and I'm on my own, every little snap and break, I'm going to think is a Bigfoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, honestly, hand on heart, it doesn't cross my mind. Or oh, maybe once or twice I'll think, wouldn't it be weird if I'm just sat here now in my tent? and like a head just popped around the corner of the hem line. That's the only time I think about it. Mm. Um, and yeah, I've just, it's helped me so much as wild camping. Um, like, you know, mental health, I'm in a good place again now. Um, well, there's not only that, man. You, you do have your channel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to mention that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I have a YouTube channel uh, where I do my bushcraft exploits on them. Um, in wild camping recently, I've been making, in my humble opinion, making some pretty good videos. Uh, but I do talk about Bigfoot as well occasionally, yeah. and you know, cryptids and all that realm of it. And just now, it's like again that it's amalgamated for me into this almost like this maelstrom of my interests and my passions. Well, that's how I found out about you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, for everyone listening, what's the name of, of your channel? Uh, campfire stories of Lancashire. Yeah. Um, so yeah, where where would I like to wild camp? Yeah, yeah. My my um. So I'm trying to like camp in as many places as I can at the moment. Not necessarily that interested in any cryptid action that's going on there. It's just it's just this new amazing hobby that I found for myself that I really enjoy doing. I can't get enough of it to be honest with you. 
Um, and yeah, like I said, I, I did stab them. You know, there's dogmen stuff up there, UFOs and whatnot. Um, and then on the Graham Road, I was mentioning to you before, I've heard whoops there at night time. Yeah. Uh, when I went in my early days of very, you know, amateur wild camping with my friend. Um, so I'm, I'm not particularly that interested in pursuing the cryptid side of it when I go out. It, I mean, it would be almost like a, you know, icing on the cake if something did happen and I didn't, you know, die or get abducted by aliens or anything like that. Um, but I, I don't know, I'd like to uh, maybe like do a, I've got like a, I've got, <laughs> I've got an ambition, they call it like a five year plan type of thing. I want a wild camp up at Loch Ness and I want to wild, I want to do some wild swimming in Loch yeah, Ness. Yeah. Wow. I think that'd be pretty, pretty badass. Yeah. Um, and may, I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm building up to doing like a multi-day one, you know, because I'm get I've, the solo camp where I go out on my own and come home. I've pretty much got it down to a T now. I've got all the equipment that I like, and I, I'm getting pretty good at using it and and building my fitness up as well for these long distances. So I, I, my next challenge is to do like a multi-day one. Um, so I'd like to do that. Maybe camp down in. Devon, go looking for big cats. I think that would be quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, it would be, yeah. Because, um, like, in, as well as after Bigfoot, I would say big cats are my main predominant area of interest in cryptids in the UK. Yeah. Um, that's something that I've, you know, we've spoken about quite a lot. Um, that, uh, I definitely, well, I'm over here, you know, because you know, I, I saw one uh, yeah. back in uh, 2010 with my mum. Um, but with my animal knowledge, I can really apply a lot of expertise to that subject. So, yeah, yeah I won't mind going looking for panthers in Devon and doing a wild camp there. Mm -hmm. So the, the the one you saw when you were with your mum? What? Yeah, we can talk about that if you want. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was in 2010, long time ago now. I was 17 and we were coming back from Nottingham on a day out. And it was it was this sort of time of year, it was, you know, either early or late summer it was on it weren't right in the middle of it um because it was about eight o'clock in the evening and again we were, we were coming back from a day out in nottingham and we came back through the peak district um and there's some beautiful air roads you know mm, take through some yeah, yeah, yeah. stunning scenery of you know hillsides and reservoirs and forests surrounded and we came around this bend we've got this reservoir this really big reservoir on the foothill <coughs> excuse me on the foothill of this tall mountain I'll call it and the air road goes in a snake bend like that past it and we came around this bend and as we came around there was a slight rise in to, to our side and where the car was on the side we were driving and as we came around my mum very animatedly she, I mean I was sat in the back and my dad was driving and my sister was you know she was only about six or seven so I was probably entertaining her and we came around this bend and really animatedly she just went, What is that? You know, and, and obviously we all started and looked up. And as I looked up, the car was turning around the corner like that, and I just saw, I could see in my mind's eye still, this this it was a feline shape, but the tail I remember seeing this tail and it was bulbous. It was tar black, all in colour. And the tail on it, I can remember seeing this very cat-like tail and it was bulbous at the end. Now leopards, black leopards as they're called, um, they do have that very distinctive tail shape. Um, and as a, that's all I saw. But to this day, my mum is adamant that what she saw, she said it was a, like she described it as a large cat. Yeah. Um, and obviously my mum is, you know, Similar to me in a lot of senses, she's a very spiritual person, very open-minded to a lot of these concepts. Uh, so she'd be someone who I would take the word of. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we saw we saw one of those back yeah. in. Uh, well, we were at uh, the up near Snake Pass. Yeah. Um, we we went for a walk. Yeah. Uh, and it's well known for wallabies. And um, yeah, we saw we actually saw wallaby. Did you? Yeah. Uh, we've gone up to this crash site. Yeah. Uh, the B29 crash site up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got there and we were sat there and it, it, it some were coming down. Yeah. And I could just see the outline of it. Yeah. And I just like sort of pointed and went, what were they? To everybody who were there, like. Honestly, Mick, 
I've only just learned about these wallabies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and obviously, you can imagine it just blew my mind when I found out that we've got them in this country. And I was like, right, that's one of my videos in the next couple of months. I'm going to go looking for wallabies. Yeah. Go up to that side. Yeah. You'll, the, Under there. We, I saw it, and then Carol Ann and uh, I think it was Kaz yeah, yeah. saw it. Uh, at the same time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lee saw it yeah. with uh, a few others who were yeah. walking with him. So yeah, the 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 there are wallabies up there. It's mental, isn't it? That? <laughs> but yeah, what a random animal. Yeah. To have running around yeah. in our countryside, a wallaby, and not many people like. I mean, it was news to me, you know. And I'm like, animals are my passion and whatnot. I, I didn't know about it till a month ago. I was telling, I've been telling loads of people about it. My friends, my colleagues at work, and my family and. It, it's all news to them as well. Yeah. You know, like, so it's what? almost a cryptid then, what I've seen. Almost. <laughs> you know, it's, it's alien to this country. Exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, obviously, they don't come from the UK, naturally, but <laughs> just goes to show you, you know, like our tiny little island, you know, like uh, all the yeah. undiscovered things that are, or, you know, in that case, it's not particularly well known, but things that are running around in countryside that yeah. we don't know about. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. when you look at the shape of a wallaby as well, uh, seeing it like I saw it, with the sun going down behind him, it was like shadowed, I could have easily looked at it and thought, you know, like, that's a werewolf. Yeah, the yeah, way yeah. The shape of course, of the it, face yeah, yeah. Came out yeah. the ears. Yeah, they've got a similar yeah. shape, face, scroll, a uh, glance, I suppose, yeah. haven't they? So I can understand sometimes people might mistake them for a whatever, the dog yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Possibly. Yeah. But yeah, it's cool as that. Yeah, yeah. So lucky we saw it. Yeah, it's mad though. Like, obviously, we've been friends now for about two years or so, haven't we? And it's been about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And never had that discussion about wallabies until no. now. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of adventures we've been on, and I've literally just found out about them, and you flipping sim one. Yeah, mental as that. It, it, well, doing what we do and getting out there. We're more likely to see things than people sat at home mm -hmm. watching the telly. Yep. You know, you're actually out there doing what you're doing. Yep. We're out doing what we're doing. So we are going to come across these yeah. strange things that are happening. One thing. Plus, we're actually looking for them. Yeah, exactly. One thing that might be like a good way to finish this bit of the video off, but one thing that I, I remember you saying that was. Meant, it meant a lot to me on a personal level and it's it's a mantra that I carry with me. It's when we went up Winter Hill, when we went on the Dogman Walk uh, around the reservoirs yeah. and then me, you, Lee, I think it was Michael, who we went up, Winter, Lincoln, yeah. we went up yeah. Winter Hill and we got soaked to within yeah. an inch of our lives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. funny times. Yeah. But on the drive home, you said, you know, if more people did this sort of stuff on a regular basis, more people would live better and happier lives. No, definitely, yeah. And I, I, I've carried that mantra with me now through these last few months with the wild camping and looking for cryptids and things like that. Because it's, you know, it's it's, uh, it's core, it's fun as this. Yeah, you know it what is. I mean, I mean us, you know, a lot of people would think we're crazy for yep. sitting here and just chatting. Yeah. Uh, being yeah. Out, out in these woods. You know, yeah. but to me this is normal. This is normal. It is. But we know what we do. It's it's amazing. Do you yeah, know what I mean? And, and all the people that we meet, and you know, just even doing like this is probably our tamest adventure we've ever had. But yeah. you know, even still, it, it, it'll it'll leave me going home later on with a smile on my face. Do you know what I mean? Because I've been out with my friends, and I've been in a place that really makes me happy, and it's just another little. When yeah. I get to my deathbed, many decades from now, what play? I'll look back and think, bloody hell, I did some cool stuff in my life. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I want to look back at. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the things I've done. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, we, yeah. we lived it to the We can all, you know, like, as we get older, you know, and we're decrepit and we can't move around, but we can talk about what we did when we were younger. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's true.
Thank you.